Welcome to the 38th episode of Tokenizing Everything, our weekly interview series with thought leaders in the blockchain industry. Today's guest is on the one hand, Gail Bowman, and on the other hand, Jean-Marc Gosson from Art Can Die, a project that is focusing on converging the art industry with blockchain and crypto in general. Before we begin, I have to mention that all opinions are solely personal and do not reflect the opinion of Amazing Docs or any other involved parties. So it's a pleasure to have you here today, guys. How are you? Thank you. Thank you, Nicolas, for having us. We are feeling great. <laughs> Thanks for the, the Thank invitation. And uh, yeah, let's start this. <laughs> sure, it's a pleasure to have you guys. Um, so let's begin by maybe you guys giving a brief overview of who you are and uh, what exactly is Art Can Die. Okay. Um, it's always something to describe ourselves, <laughs> but I will do it very shortly. And let's say that, so I'm Gael Boven. I'm an international attorney at law based in Brussels. And um, we have a specialization in business law and also international investment, as well as negotiation. And uh, besides, we also operate as a cryptocurrency and blockchain lawyer. So I'm, I'm Jean-Marc Goussens. Uh, I'm a lawyer too, so I'm working together with, uh, with Gaël. So uh, I will go back a little bit more in the time. And so uh, uh, I'm, I'm a lawyer uh, since uh, 1988. And uh, I, I used to be uh, the legal and financial advisor of famous sportsmen uh, from the world of uh, golf, tennis, and especially Formula One. So, for example, I drafted the first contract in Formula One for Michael Schumacher. And uh, internet, to, to, to make the connection with uh, cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain technology, uh, international sportsmen are traveling all the year around the world and have, in general, a very open mind for international and uh, alternative uh, investments. And that's how I learned to become a, a progressive uh, lawyer thinking out of the box. And uh, I got the idea to become a specialized in blockchain technology and uh, cryptocurrency law. Hey guys, uh, thanks so much. Um, very interesting. It's always good to have people with a legal background, right? Focusing on the crypto industry as there's a lot of challenges. So before we really dive into Art Can Die, then I would say, could you give us an overview in regards to how you envision, you know, generally the, the legal environment to play out in the next five to 10 years with in mind that obviously technology and the disruption they offer with technology such as blockchain or also and artificial, artificial and jet intelligence and other aspects here kind of affect the, the legal industry as a whole. What is your take on this? Okay. forgot to admit. Uh, so actually, the blockchain environment and uh, artificial intelligence is really up to date because it's um, everybody knows it right now. Almost everybody, I mean, because it's taking every aspect of our life. If you go to Facebook, there are algorithms that are taking your information, that are making you um, decide better choices about what you will, you will buy or sell or what you like, what you don't like, etc. The same on Spotify, Apple Music. And regarding blockchain, you cannot uh, avoid the situation anymore because the most famous application of blockchain will be cryptocurrency. And uh, this year uh, was spectacular uh, in this point of view. We had um, a great bull run and uh, a huge hype was um, on the... Uh, uh, was taking the, the, the whole world, especially regarding coin like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Every, everyone has to be aware of it right now. And technically speaking, not a lot of people understand what really is a blockchain or what uh, are the specified aspects behind a Bitcoin or a Ethereum. But what we can clearly understand is that blockchain is changing the game. Blockchain is something that will have and already start to have a huge impact in the way people are exchanging information. Because blockchain 
can um, remove the middleman for the, 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 the most obvious feature, but also gives people a lot of transparency, especially against uh, a lot of bad behavior or against a bad centralization of things. So in a legal perspective, blockchain really offer a lot of opportunities. It will be um, a, a good, a, one of the best case possible to organize a new way of making elections of a new way of um, controlling our um, land registries, or again, a new way of dealing with uh, counterfection. And um, in that, in all those aspects, it's really interesting to dig into it. And also in, um, in a financial way, blockchain offers a lot of advantage. For example, you can um, make transactions uh, in a faster way than ever before. And it, it's also uh, cost effective. Well, for example, when we organize um, fundraising for some projects, we can exchange money in a, in a most efficient way. And that is for me something that for sure the world will get to know more and more. And in 10 years from now, the blockchain ecosystem will be so usable that everyone will be able to use it. Even though you don't know that you are using blockchain, you, you will use in it, like for the internet. Yeah, definitely. And I think that comparison is always, you know, good to make in, in that sense, right? Blockchain application needs to be intuitive. So in regards to, you know, applying blockchain within the art industry, there's obviously a couple of different you know, let's say, yeah, application models, right? On the one hand, it is about transferring art, it's about the supply chain even, you know, but also other aspects such as tokenization play a huge role, whether it is, you know, collaborative governance of an art ecosystem, whether it is tokenizing art itself, right? NFTs are a big hype. There is a lot of, you know, application and also, Throughout my history in the blockchain space, such as writing articles on this topic, I've realized that there's a lot of people interested in this. But what would you as experts in this kind of convergence of art and blockchain de describe? What would you say is the current status quo of, of you know, blockchain application and especially adoption within the art industry? Within the art industry, the blockchain will have the, the main effect of, first of all, it will allow people to certify the authorship. So that is to say it's a huge uh, advantage. For, for, for now on, we will be able to be all certain of the authorship of uh, the creator of an artwork. So that is a main advantage. But besides, blockchain will also allow, for example, the tokenization of art. And that is to say, for example, in tokenization, there is the, 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 um, the big version, the big understanding of tokenization that, in, that includes at least two things. First, the, the, the bigger tokenization process. That is to say that you can tokenize almost anything, whether fungible or not fungible. And from that point, you can, for example, take 100 person together, could buy one, expensive painting. How do we do that? We tokenize the painting, for example, a $1 million painting, and we tokenize that painting in 1 million token. So one person could buy 100 parts of the million, and 1,000 person could then buy a $1 million painting, proceeding that way. So that's the first way I can analyze the tokenization process. Then there is also the NFTs. And um, as far as Arkenda is concerned, it's the way of NFT, NFT sorry, that we have chosen. Because NFTs consist simply of making something, any assets possible in the world, unique, digitally speaking. So you link a token to a certain assets, for example, link 
a token to a certain painting. And in the token, you um, integrate some codes, for example, some conditions. The condition will be for artists to have a resale right. So that is something that will be more transparent for the artists and the, in the art industry in general. For example, the artist could um, organize the NFT in such a way that each time the artwork will be resale, the original artist, the original author of the art will perceive a certain uh, fraction of the re revenue generated. So it's, it's really something that will, again, uh, revolutionize the art industry that is normally characterized by, uh, I would say, by opacity. Most of the time, we don't know who is, who really is the owner of our art or who has the right on the uh, art piece. But this time, with blockchain and the, all the character, characteristics we know, this could change. And so artists can make their living in, uh, in new ways. For example, also artists could use uh, blockchain and NFTs to express themselves in new ways. We, we have seen in the, um, uh, the blockchain space recently that some artists could, for example, sign a special uh, clause he wore, he wore on a special event and then make an NFT of it and then sell it to someone. Or even we, we have the famous example of uh, the founder of uh, one of the co-founder of, of Twitter that tokenized his tweet. And then that tweet has been uh, sold for like, I, I think more than 1 million. It's Jack Dorsey's tweet. Jack Dorsey. the, first, the first tweet of the founder of, uh, of Twitter. Yes, and, and uh, if, I, if I can add, uh, okay, some, in some discussion you hear that, uh, that NFTs uh, could be a speculative bubble, and I, I, I don't agree with that. So just to come back on the NFT, so uh, what is a fungible asset? A fungible asset is something with units that can be interchanged, like, like money, for example. Uh, you can swap a $100 note for $250. And on the contrary, when something is non-fungible, it means it's unique, like said uh, Gael. It cannot be interchanged, like a house or a painting, such, such as the, the, the Mona Lisa. And uh, NFTs are certificates of ownership for unique assets. So in other words, this, mean, this means that an NFT buyer is not purchasing a work, is not buying a work, an art piece, but only a token that links to a unique work. And so some, some people, some then are arguing that it can be purely speculative. But I believe that people are buying NFTs not only as an investment, but also for emotional reasons, because it provides a unique link uh, to the uh, unique connection to the artist, to the creator. Um, it's for the same kind of reason that people are buying luxury goods. Uh, we, we attach strong emotions uh, to the purchase of expensive brands, uh, uh, like uh, handbags, like uh, watches, uh, uh, like cars. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and why are we doing this? We are doing this, people are doing this uh, for the feeling of accomplishment for artwork, or also for acceptance from others or to send a message. And when people are buying NFTs, they are publicly showing their commitment to the artist. They are associating their respective reputation and this can be of huge value. And so that's why I think I'm, I'm convinced that when we, we are buying NFTs, we are driven by emotions. And uh, the emotions are hardwired in our DNA, and that's that's even stronger than a blockchain. And that's why NFTs, I'm, I'm sure of it, they are not speculative. It's not a speculative bubble. Yeah, thanks so much for and, this. Um... And, and if 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 I can, if I may, um, if I can ask something, because Jean-Marc said something very interesting about non-fungibility, and something that I may not be, um, I may not have been maybe specific about it, it's that the non-fungibility is linked to the scarcity. And in the art field, scarcity is really something that matters because it's scarcity that gives the value to a certain piece of art. 
people want to buy something because it, it's it's rare. And then with the NFTs, uh, the NFT technology, we, we finally can achieve that into the digital sphere. Because in the past, for sure, you could already buy digital things online. But what, what was lacking, it was this scarcity created now by the blockchain that can ensure that something really is to someone, is linked to someone and not, or to a few people. But all of this will be dis described into the token. And since blockchain is immutable, you, 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 will be, you will have an easy access to that kind of information. And it, it will then not only avoid a lot of legal conflicts, but it will also um, enhance the liquidity of the art world. Yes. Because we make all the art industry more liquid, more easy to access, more transparent. Thanks, especially to the blockchain technology. And that is to say one of the application um, is NFT. Yes, yes, that's very important, uh, Guy. Indeed, what, what, you, what you create with NFTs and, and, and so with uh, uh, blockchain technology is that you create scarcity. And, and I, I would say perfect scarcity. If you take gold, for example, you can always find more gold. Nobody knows how much gold we, we will find in the future. Maybe on a, we, we will find maybe also on another, in a, in a, in a, we can find also, for example, gold on another planet. Why not? So nobody knows yeah. on the earth, of, uh, even on the moon, of Mars, of other planets. In the future, we can always find more gold. But what we can do with blockchain uh, technology is to create perfect scarcity. Like Bitcoin or Arkengang coin, we have relieved exactly 21 million units. Yes, exactly. so that's, and that gives the value to the units. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, that scarcity is definitely an important aspect that is the great similarity between the art industry, obviously, in the crypto space where scarcity plays a huge role. So you already mentioned art can die a bit. So, you know, <laughs> at, at this uh, stage, I would, you know, obviously focus the, the topic on this. Um, art can die is a very interesting project where we have to say no financial advice, right? <laughs> Yeah. I'm also one of the advisors at Art Can Die. To be fully transparent, it's it's quite an interesting project. And you know, let's hear it from the, the co-founders. What is Art Can Die and how do you aim to transform you know the, the art industry? Yeah. Art can die. Finally, Art Can Die is like we 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 have uh, claimed it a lot of time. <laughs> Art Can Die, it's really for us the most perfect way the most perfect decentralized way for engaging in the art market. Why? Because as everyone knows, the art field, the art area is really important. We, 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 we have just been through the COVID-19 situation and we really felt deeply in ourselves what costs us not to have access to cultural aspects, to emotional aspects that art is bringing us and then from that situation we thought about something the problem is art can die real art can die and we had the situation with the COVID-19 a lot of artists died somehow their project their, their ambition their creativity died especially in the COVID-19 situation but in general as well. And why is that? The most obvious reason is they lack financing. So we thought about it out of the box. We think that there is now a, 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 a special solution, an efficient solution, that is blockchain. Blockchain allows people to make transactions, to exchange information, to do things in a way that is more efficient and more transparent. And Safe. So when you combine the advantages of the blockchain with the potential of the art industry, you arrive at Arc and Die. Arc and Die will allow people to engage, to participate in the creation, the promotion of real art, real projects that we can talk about just after that, but 
So people will be able to use the blockchain technology to engage, to invest, to participate in a lot of projects. When I mean invest, I mean not just invest in the financial sense. I mean invest themselves because they will feel concerned about the project, about their creation, about the impact that all those projects will have on the lives of people. And for me, this is Ark and Die. Ark and Die is the perfect decentralized way to engage in the art market. Thanks, Gail. Um, in regards to usual mark, do you have something to add on that side in regards to what is the vision of, of Ark and I? So, very, very briefly, uh, what, what, what we want to do, like uh, Gail said, is that uh, we want uh, to collect funds to finance artists. And, uh, and, uh, and, and artists from uh, high quality uh, so uh, that's that's only in, in one sentence that's that's the explanation uh, uh, for Ark and Die coin and like uh, Agael said uh, it's uh, we, we are using the latest technology uh, blockchain technologies uh, NFTs uh, to uh, to achieve this uh, this goal yeah yeah right. for all people that will participate in the in the project in the Ark can uh, Die ecosystem will be rewarded for that rewarded in the sense that they will receive special perks like the chance to meet our artist or the chance to have their name put at the end of the movie like some hope since they participate in all this by giving their emotion by implementing integrating a DAO ecosystem inside Ark and Die so it's a lot of things it's really interesting it's for for once People can not only just buy the ticket of cinema and watch the movie. They can buy, they can participate since the beginning of the project until the end. And what, uh, and, and we are also uh, really connected to the real world. Uh, that's make, that's make a, a difference with a lot of uh, other crypto, uh, crypto projects. Uh, bon, if you take, for example, Bitcoin, Bitcoin has no underlying project. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's just a cryptocurrency. The, the, the goal of uh, Bitcoin is uh, to replace uh, a a fiat currencies. It's just a currency. So, and then you have other currencies uh, and what they are trying to do, uh, their, their, their goal is to improve their, their own ecosystem. Uh, for example, you have uh, Cardano, uh, Polkadot, uh, uh, and other uh, famous cryptocurrency like this. And then you have a third category, uh, but you don't have a lot of, uh, of uh, competitors uh, in this category. And that's what I, I like to call the cryptocurrency connected to the real world. Okay, we are using tech, blockchain technology, but we are connected with the real world, we are connected with the world of art. We are connected with the artist. We collect funds to finance real artistic projects. So for example, one of our, all of the first projects that we already finance, it's a famous uh, Thai artist. She's very famous in Thailand. She also famous in other countries uh, from Asia, like China. She make big expedition with a lot of success in, in, in China, but she has never been to Europe nor to native to America. And one of the first projects we have already done, achieved, is that we have financed the exposition of one of uh, iconic painting on a giant billboard uh, on, in Times Square, on Times Square, New York, and on 100 billboards everywhere in, in New York. So we are really connected to the real world. The real world, yeah. And Jean-Marc, it's it's um, very interesting, very important that mentions uh, that Jean-Marc said it because Arc and Die is really anchored in the real world. Arc and Die, at, in, um, at the difference of other cryptocurrencies, you can really feel Arc and Die. You can touch it. It will be concrete. It has already been concrete because you, you, could, you could see Arc and Die exposed on New York Times Square. It was there, the painting was exposed uh, in front of our eyes. And then um, um, with time, we will also have real projects that you will be able to feel 
in the reality. You will be able to touch it. So for once there is a cryptocurrency, you can put some, some, yeah, some um, uh, material on it, some feeling. You can really touch it in the in the real world. And for me, that's something that that change. It's there is some matter to it. I cannot touch an uh, Ethereum or a Bitcoin. I can just exchange them. I can just follow the hype, the the increasing of the value or the decreasing. But with Ark and Dai, with Ark and Dai coin, it will be different. You will be able to check our project inside museum online. You will be able to go to the cinema to watch the movie. You will be able to buy one of the paintings. To have it at home and to to see that Ark and Die really exist in this world. Hey guys, I mean, thanks for this, um, you know, very detailed overview of how this Ark and Die system, you know, is, is playing out, right? And you've also chosen the way of a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, which is uh, quite interesting. So that basically you know that there is a community that governs collaboratively the funds that um, to a certain extent you know in regards to which art projects are supported you are also working with uh, you know artists directly right in regards to screening projects so that's it's obviously important to have experts on the team uh, that, that screen these projects and, and for instance also from the DAO model itself right when when a project is funded in that sense you know, to a certain degree, some IP may be distributed to that respective party. And hence, um, basically, you know, the DAO itself can monetize this IP, right? So it, it's very interesting. And I'm, I know that you are going to release a, a new white paper soon about this. So I definitely advise everyone listening to, to watch for this white paper, right? It's going to be very interesting how you, how you kind of you know, converge this this trend of a DAO with with the art industry. Um, going to the to the next um, step, which is the being crypto community question for you is is basically how has the feedback so far been from the projects itself themselves, right? Where which you can obviously share a bit about what exactly are the projects you are working on and how has been their feedback to you um, in regards to working with the art and the ecosystem. So that's yeah, this week's being crypto special community question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Thank you, Nicolas. Um, actually, since we are all concerned um, with art, of course, we receive a lot of very, very positive um, recommendation and enthusiastic res uh, response from the, 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 the public. Because first of all, what, what comes in mind uh, of the people who, who have reply to us is always this thing. For once, we will be able to participate in an art project. We feel like we are uh, giving, uh, we, are, we feel like we are giving birth, I, I would say we are co-creators. And that is something huge for people because for example, they take the uh, iconic painting of the famous Thai artist that we are collaborating with and People told, tell me it's so amazing for me to be able to buy a coin and then to be linked somehow with that artist and to feel that I am giving um, um, a chance to that artist to create art pieces, art creation with a full potential and to be able to participate in the project, to be able to, to be in uh, the ones that offer this kind of opportunity also to other artists, sometimes less known. It's also something that people uh, are telling me, uh, es especially also with the project, um, the Noir project, the Noir TV show that we are uh, producing. People are really enthusiastic about that project because they feel like, again, they will receive, they will have like consultancy Right, because the token is a utility token. So they will have the opportunity, for example, to vote on the casting, on, on the removal um, of uh, some artists on the show, or for example, on the, on the script. They will 
the, 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 their opinion will be asked from time to time on certain question. And that is something that people have yet never really experienced in that kind of uh, field. So that is something that is really positive. And in addition, uh, people in our project will also uh, benefit from um, what we call require, requesting rights. That is to say that when a significant part of the community of, of the Arkandai community will uh, want to see an investment into a special art creation, a special art project, it will be feasible because thanks to the DAO, thanks to the blockchain, to the whole cryptocurrency environment. And that is something that is, um, yeah, that people are, are telling, telling us all uh, this positive aspect. And on the negative side, I could say that what is still a problem with the crypto industry is that, for example, the middlemen, the banks are still blocking people from buying certain coins because when you live in certain area of the world, you have some restrictions. And then sometimes it's not even legal. It's just a decision from the bank to just to block your transaction. And they, they are just, most of the time, they are not telling you anything. You have to call them. But when you, you call them, they explain to you that, oh, it's for your own protection that we have blocked your, uh, your payment or your transaction. But if you want, you, we can remove the restriction. We can remove um, the, the, the restriction of payment and we can allow your payment. But most of the time, it's a bit like disappointing. And it, it is something that needs to be um, taken care of. And what we are doing right now with Ark and Die to avoid those kind of um, misunderstandings or misadventure is to allow people to buy directly their Ark and Die coin to participate in the project directly from our website through launch pools, through, through decentralized application. Okay, thanks again. From your side, John Mark, do you have, do you have any yes. other yes, aspects? I totally to agree add? with that. In, in, in fact, it is not a problem uh, from technology, uh, blockchain technology or cryptocurrency. The problem is to is to transform your fiat, fiat uh, currencies to blockchain currencies to uh, cryptocurrencies. So once once uh, you have cryptocurrencies, all the transactions are very very easy. But it's indeed indeed many banks are still blocking uh, blocking uh, transactions uh, when you want to. Uh, so if you want to make a payment to a, a cryptocurrency exchange, some banks of credit cards uh, are blocking your transactions. And like 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 I said, uh, uh, Gael, uh, they are they are they are saying yes, we are doing this to protect uh, to protect you because uh, it's volatile and uh, okay. In in fact, they just want to protect their own business. Uh, because okay, um, it's it's a notion. The the the, the notion uh, is that when 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 you give one thousand dollar to your bank, uh, the, your your bank doesn't keep the one thousand dollar. The bank is legally is legally allowed to invest up to nine hundred dollar of your money, and just keep one hundred dollar in the off change that you will ask for your money back. Uh, this is called the fractional reserve banking. And since 2020, uh, it's uh, the, the reserve requirement uh, in uh, the USA is only uh, is, is zero, and only one percent in Europe. So in in other words, if too many people ask for their money back, uh, for example, to invest in cryptocurrencies, the banks won't be able to give them their money because they don't have it anymore. And that's that's why bankers very often they refuse and they're they're, they're scared. But um, the public becomes more educated on crypto and, uh, and, and decentralization, and they see the benefits uh, for the future of finance. And, and I think that the bankers should not fear the, the, the risk of this, uh, this new technology. They, they, uh, they, they should look ahead uh, for potential benefits. So it's a, it's a question of time. It's a, question, it's a new technology. New technologies are, have always feared people. And now we talk more and more about uh, regulation. Uh, for example, now it's, uh, it's uh, accurate in the USA. And I think it's positive. And on, 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 
on long term, it will be very positive for the crypto world. And for sure, Nicolas, what I also forgot to, to mention is that, but for me, it was so obvious <laughs> that people in Ark and I project, what people like is the decentralized aspect. So the DAO, to be member of the DAO. So it's, uh, it's right now, it's something that it's worth it. It's like, it's the future, it's the present, but it's also the fu future. You automated uh, the, the whole organization. Everything is more transparent. You participate in something in something in which you have the control of the informations of what will happen or what you don't want to see happening. You know, the, so this aspect is obviously one of the main important um, aspects of Ark and Die. People will become member. I like to see Ark and Die like a big community. Like we have, we, we, we will form a community of crypto enthusiasts and art lovers in the same time. And then we will also implement other features. Like for example, we, 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 done, we didn't um, talk yet about the metaverse feature that will some um, day will be uh, created and integrated in Ark and Die ecosystem. And for sure, there is also the possibility for staking that Ark and I will offer to, will be offering to people. So all those aspects, and actually Ark and I is a project that, that um, inside Ark and so many opportunities, so many, there is so much potential because right now we are not even aware of what will be the future of blockchain. Like, I mean, the new, all the new technologies, all the new application that will be revealed in time. But Ark and I is positioning itself right now because it's the right moment to do something to combine the benefits of the blockchain technology and the art industry to be able in the future to do even more. Definitely. I mean, you're, it's, it's good that you mentioned the future because, you know, my next question would have been, you know, how does the roadmap look like for Ark and I? What, what do you have in mind? Right, and you, you already mentioned the metaverse feature, which I think is, is really cool, right? I envision, you know, you walking through the metaverse and then there's a specific Arcadi gallery where all the different, you know, artworks and, and forms of art within the ecosystem are replicated in that sense and you can actually make purchases there. So it's like, so to say a real world art gallery though in the yeah. virtual reality, right? <laughs> So in that sense, and, and, and it's all within the Ark and I DAO's ecosystem. And then obviously staking is also something interesting. I, I believe, right, when, when in the future aspects such as, you know, like transactions within the art industry that can be staked on and generally having a passive income scheme within this, which is apart from like, I mean, most passive income models, so to say in the art industry are mainly about Know, renting out art and, and, and these type of aspects, but I think this adds another layer of, you know, financialization to this industry, but also kind of makes it much more diverse in regards to, to you know, for instance, also integrating DeFi features, for instance, staking an NFT from the art can die ecosystem in a DeFi protocol is also something that I believe could be quite, quite you know, auspicious in the future. So in your own words, how do the next six to 12 months within the art and ecosystem look like? And, and what is your, your goal? What are your goals and your roadmap on that, on that level? Yes. And um, just before uh, <laughs> replying to this question, I would also like to mention that for sure, another specific aspect of Ark and Dai is that it's anchoring the, it's, uh, it's linked to the physical world. So people feel confident. They, they, they feel like I can give my trust to that project because I can easily check if it's real or not. You will see the, the, the art project. You can already see it uh, because some are already done. But with time, there will be more and more and more projects. So it's something that really matters here. You can, you have that confidence that you know what the cryptocurrency has been built for, and you participate in the creation, the development of that cryptocurrency. And that is something huge. 
Okay. Um, regarding your last question, so in the, the future, what will be now the most important date uh, ahead? It will be, first of all, we have um, normally it's uh, planned for the end of this month, actually in the following weeks, I will say, we will release the new version of uh, the revised version of the white paper. So that will be an, an, important, um, an important step because reading the white paper will allow you to understand everything that we have been through and we will uh, check together this day in this interview in a more detailed um, way and with a lot of explanations and information. But of course, you will also find description and explanation about the nine already current projects of Ark and Die. For example, like I said, we have one project uh, that consists in producing a TV show that is called Noir. I let people discover it, but it will be really a special uh, TV show with like um, a 17, 18 uh, atmosphere. And uh, with also a bit of erotism and special features that will be really elegant and uh, a beautiful music. So this show we, uh, has already uh, appealed a lot of people and it's clear that the, the, this show will have, I will uh, encounter a huge success. But we also have a, a project with uh, Marisa Papen, who is a really famous um, artist uh, known for uh, her special photographs of her. Um, she's also an activist. And with her, with that uh, famous artist, we are organizing the creation of a huge sculpture um, of um, a special part uh, of the body of uh, Marisa Papen, and it will be really beautiful. So I really um, encourage people to check out the website and to discover that project as well. But another project that is really in impressive is that Arkandai, Arkandai coin will be uh, featured on the top of the world. So we are collaborating with a famous French uh, documentary maker that is, uh, who is called um, Jean-Michel Jordan. He's already, uh, he has already realized a lot of documentary. Most uh, often it's about the Everest and the, the, the chains of mountains there, but it's really, we, we really like the, the vision of, uh, Jean, um, of Jean-Michel. It was really an artistic vision. So it's not just a, a simple and ordinary documentary. It's really a deep documentary about the Everest, so the top of the world, please, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the, the Everest. <laughs> and it's about protecting the Everest, so especially up against the pollution that, hap that is happening every day uh, on the Everest and also on other famous mountains. So somehow it's about protecting the earth. It's uh, right now we, we, we are taking position. It's, um, yeah, it's allowing a special, a famous movie director to create a new documentary that will be uh, called Everest Recycling on this specific subject. And what will be really, really interesting and really funny and uh, exciting is that Ark and Die will be featured on the top of the Everest. So you will see the first cryptocurrency to achieve, to attain the of the world. So we will be close to the moon. <laughs> the closest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally speaking, definitely. Yeah, literally yeah. speaking. <laughs> and then so that was for to talk about about the to talk a bit about the project. But since so this end of the August we have the release of the white paper. Then we have uh, the launch pool. We will organize a private sale to our uh, website that will link you to uh, the launch pool in the end of uh, September. And probably that launch pool will last for 10 days. So that will be uh, the private launch pool. And then in uh, October, you will have the public launch pool that will probably take place around October 20th or something like this, but it will follow the private sale. 
And normally, after the public sales, we will arrive at the point of uh, the end of the IU, because what we didn't mention is that Arkendang is already uh, on IO, on La Token Exchange. And that IO will normally end on um, November something, and it will be the time for the listing. So normally the Arc and Icon will be listed on the, the, the huge Latocon exchange on November, in the, the, in the course of the, the month uh, of November. And then you will have also some um, information about the, uh, the launch of the DAO. Okay, that's that's very exciting to know. And from from your side, Jean-Marc, do you do you have anything to add? Uh, not really. That was uh, very complete about the project. We have also one more project. This is called the Arc, and uh, it, it's also a very special project. And uh, and uh, all the projects are really uh, described in our website. So uh, for the people interested to follow us. Uh, uh, I advise to go on our website and you can see step by step uh, the creation of all the projects. So uh, once again, you can see, you can trust, you can, you can almost feel what we are doing. That is really huge. And of course, um, throughout that time, in the following weeks, months, there will be another airdrop, of course, uh, there will, we will also organize a buying competition and also um, a buying competition that will be linked with special prices, such as special NFTs from our artists. So that will be really interesting too. And in a certain future, after that, after the listing of the coin and the launch of the DAO, uh, a metaverse will be implemented. It's very, very interesting, I think, you know, Especially, you know, you have kind of the whole convergence, you have the crypto, you have the metaverse, you have DeFi, okay. and, you know, so it's, a, you have the real world. <laughs> and so it's, yeah, it's a, it's a very yeah, diverse ecosystem that is really, you know, second to none. And I think in regard to the actual influence from the real world, obviously, um, you know, there are, I guess, certain aspects within the art industry that, that need to be disrupted. Um, and this disruption, you know, obviously takes some time, right? To a certain extent here and there, but on the other hand, once this disruption happens and we have any form of value, you know, within the art industry, whether it's making decisions, whether it is uh, the art itself, whether it's the access to the art, a license, any form of agreement, basically anything or tokenizing, everything really applies, I think, perfectly <laughs> in the in the art industry. So it's 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 a great and a very exciting use case. Um, coming to the end of the the conversation today, which has been very insightful, um, I have a last question, and I think you can maybe both give a quick uh, statement on this. And uh, this is a question that I always ask my guests. Where do you see blockchain and tokenization in 10 years from now? Hmm. That's a good question. Actually, it's an interest, interesting question and um, I would have a pleasure to reply. <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, I think blockchain is already here. And uh, I, I read, uh, I, I'm not sure where, uh, but in a, in a famous newspaper like one month ago that in Spain, Actually, currently, there are more than one fourth of the companies that are using blockchain, actually, currently. So it could give you already a perspective of what will be blockchain in 10 years. Check it, check it out now in Spain and in other countries. You have also big companies, big groups like LVMH or Carrefour that are already using blockchain to uh, collect information, to secure information, and to give uh, trust for fee and really accurate information about all the products that they are selling. You also have that company, uh, Satoshi, uh, Satoshi something, that are selling shoes, who are using NFTs. So each time they are selling, uh, each time they sell um, a shoe, they put also an NFT in the box, and that NFT certifies you that it's a real one. So again, another um, perspective about blockchain. I have some contacts also in uh, the Middle East, Bahrain and Africa, 
they're using blockchains to register land property or to to the uh, to apply to the the, the, the cargo traffic all you know all the traffic for our su supply chains so it's also used already for yeah by a lot of companies so i could say that in 10 years from now blockchain will become more and more usable less complex and then blockchain will certainly be used by much more people if it's not to say by everyone like the internet we are not really sure about what is internet or what are the protocols behind it but for sure you we can use in the internet we can connect to zoom we can use our smartphone we can do everything application and i think it's the same with blockchain and especially in financially speaking too because you are aware that a lot of people right now do, uh, don't, uh, do, don't, don't have access to a bank account and for sure blockchain will also help uh, in that regard you know it will help to to decrease the the poverty in the world uh, simply speaking and so for me it's something that is passionate and uh, something that is really really uh, revolutionary it's something that is uh, that was needed and that is here now and we we surely have to to be the ones who implement that blockchain technology uh, for the benefits of everyone yes i, I confirm uh, in, I'm, I'm convinced uh, in in about 10 years uh, almost uh, almost all sector will uh, use blockchain technology that's that's why i wanted to be a blockchain lawyer and uh, if you ask me uh, what sector uh, in 10 years will not be using or will not be dependent uh, of uh, blockchain uh, technology uh, i will answer it's like asking what sector today are not uh, using uh, um, internet or even electricity it's really a revolution blockchain technology uh, is really a revolution yeah definitely it's a decentralized disruption in that sense that is yes. Yeah. Coming into every, it's completely every disruptive. Disruptive. Yes. And blockchain deals with the exchange of information of everything, the exchange of peop between people. And we, you are human beings, that's what we do. We need to exchange <laughs> between one another. And blockchain is finally here to to take a better, uh, yeah, to take the example of nature. Because if you think uh, thoroughly, deeply into it, it, it looks like nature. Nature function a bit like a blockchain ecosystem. Everyone is working for the benefit of everyone in a transparent way. And so, yeah, it's something really, really great. Yes, and by yeah. the way, that's one of the reasons also why uh, Gail and I are co-founder of uh, four blockchainer. Exactly. Four <laughs> with a four blockchainer. That's a, it's a it's a new social network uh, f uh, dedicated exclusively uh, to blockchain technology. And so, uh, okay, the, what we want to do is to connect all the people uh, involved in blockchain technology. So not only cryptocurrencies, uh, but blockchain technology all over the world. And it's, uh, okay, it's, it's a little bit like a Facebook or a LinkedIn, LinkedIn, but only for specialists of uh, blockchain technology. Yeah, specialists and as well crypto enthusiasts, because for sure we will not limit the access if someone feel interested uh, by blockchain technology or cryptocurrency or even uh, artificial intelligence. The, the goal was to create that forum, that social network where everyone can be together and just share information, advisors, projects, also jobs, a uh, lot of information. So yeah, uh, it's another thing that we co-create with Jean-Marc and it is called uh, forblockchainers.com. So it's really interesting, yeah. Perfect. Thanks so much, guys, for, for this, um, you know, good finish. I think uh, definitely I haven't, haven't heard a comparison between blockchain and nature before, but uh, definitely there are, I, I see the synergies that you are referring to. So yeah. <laughs> thanks for, for this. And yeah, I mean, I look forward to continuously following the path of, of the ARC and the ecosystem. So thanks so much, guys, for, for this conversation. And it was a pleasure Thank you so to much, too. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Nicolas. Thank you. Likewise. And to our listeners, as always, um, 
you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about, you know, yeah, the industry in general and uh, how blockchain and crypto generally would disrupt it, I'm sure you can reach out to Gail, to John Mark, and to the entire Arkansas team. And on the other hand, if you have obviously any general tokenization related questions, you're free to reach out to me at any time. Thanks so much, guys, and see you next week. Bye.